Good afternoon, sister, and uh, I introduce whoever watching us, uh, Reverend Sister Natalie Becker. Am I correct? I don't know yeah, the yeah, pronunciation. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. <laughs> so she is a Xavier nun. That's what I uh, I understood from the website. Mm. Now she is presently the Under Secretary of the General Secretariat of Synod in the Vatican. Now you know that uh, uh, Pope Holy Father Pope Francis is the president of this. Senate, and then we have got General Secretary, Secretary General, Secretary General Cardinal Mario Grech, and then he is working together with two under secretaries, and here we have Sister Natalie, one of the two under secretaries. So we are indeed privileged to have you with us in Paroch Research Institute. Hearty welcome, and thank you very much for uh, spending time with us. Thank you so much. It's really a blessing and a gift for me to be here. So thank you for welcoming me and helping me to discover more about yeah. uh, yes. the Archdiocese and the reality here. Thank you. And uh, we also feel this new initiative of Synodality, uh, the Synod on Synodality 21-24, a blessing. Because... Uh, when we started as Parokh Research Institute in 2015, August 15th, uh, you know, we had certain concerns which we tried to work out in our own way. And all of a sudden we see that the same concerns are beautifully coming up from the Universal mm. Church. So that is the reason why uh, we are very much interested in this whole process of synodality. And uh, I am asked to share our experiences on uh, this process. Mm -hmm. And why I was asked now, the present director is Father Saijo uh, Taikatil. But I am asked to converse with you because I was in a way instrumental to begin this uh, Parukh, together with another Jesuit priest, mm -hmm. Father E.J. Thomas. Mm -hmm. uh, so, let me share what concerns I had when I thought of this. As I told you earlier, I was teaching dogmatic theology for almost two decades. And then, uh, while I converse with people, I understand that we are going in parallels mm. and I'm teaching theology of the Trinity, mm. uh, one of the most important foundations of our faith and the church. But how far are we responding to the concerns of the people in the theology and the language as mm. well as the content we present? And therefore, uh, that is one reason why I thought we I need to come down to the earth. And the Mary Mother Major Seminary, where I taught, which uh, celebrates presently the Silver Jubilee of its beginning. Now, that seminary was initiated only because of the pastoral necessity. We wanted to uh, form seminarians who are very much pastorally sensitive at, uh, in already from the time of the uh, formation. And therefore, the first rector, presently Bishop Raphael, mm. used to say, our seminary has no gates, mm. no doors. Mm -hmm. People are to come in. Mm -hmm. And then uh, people should be also formators. Mm. So that was the concern which uh, uh, the seminary had. And therefore, we had several uh, exposure programs, immersion programs, and so on. And there also we found the necessity 
for more participation uh, in the life of the church from the part of the lay people from all different sorts of people especially women mm. and children youngsters and so on so uh, these concerns were there and then uh, you know we had uh, one program called a diaconal internship so the deacons they were not staying in the seminary mm. they were appointed by the archbishop in one of the parishes mm. that they come for their formation to the seminary mm. and there we thought we should uh, you know make them really work mm. with the people so we introduced a diaconal project and in one parish one seminarian did an excellent work mm. and when i uh, looked into the reason i found that he was helped by a a, a professor of sociology mm. uh, one of the faithful in the parish mm. that was a real eye opening for mm. us so why can't we make use of the uh, new developments in sociology sociological tools to know the concerns of the people and that is how we think we began to think of a new methodology initially i contacted a sociologist uh, who was known for his macro level mm. studies but then that didn't work mm. that person was already engaged then we contacted father ej thomas mm. he was very much interested in micro level mm. interventions and that was certainly providential uh, as far as i understand today because uh, he was interested in how a parish can really be present in the family mm. in the small group of families and that was how we started this whole process one thing perhaps common with the process you are engaged maybe you mm. can respond um we uh, maybe a similar process similar concerns are there also in uh, the general secretariat of synod while thinking of or uh, planning a synod on synodality you like to comment on this i don't know yeah. um, yes i thank you very much for this yeah. uh, presentation and uh, explaining the way mm-hmm. you found it that that resonated a lot with me because uh, mm. i also studied sociology okay because yeah. during my studies in philosophy and uh, theology in paris mm-hmm. i understood also that to understand the life of the people mm-hmm. the society yeah. where the church is yes. called to be church in mm. a certain context mm-hmm. and culture you need also the tools of yes. sociology so i did that that's that that's and right, yeah. all my experience during 30 years in yeah. youth ministry oh, yeah. i have been working a lot also with the mm-hmm. survey studies mm-hmm. the yeah. approach of sociology yeah. and, and to, to connect, connect with, with what, what we are doing with synodality mm-hmm. it's really you know we see that the starting point of synodality is the situation the exactly. concreteness yeah. the reality mm-hmm. the people as they are yeah uh, it's not uh, an approach coming from the moon <laughs> you know yeah. outside yeah, so right. exactly yeah. what you yeah. what, what you expressed yeah. and and i think Mm. that sociology survey is a kind of listening yes of course it's just a methodology and yes. we don't have to absolute it mm-hmm. <laughs> but it can really help mm-hmm. to understand better and to listen yeah. better uh, and then through those um, results and mm. that give us understanding uh, mm. what the holy spirit is telling yes, us yes, so yes. I'm very interesting to mm-hmm. to discover more because yeah. I really think that we can do pastoral yeah without also that kind of um, exactly yeah understanding you can yeah, say yeah, yeah. of course we need theology yeah yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> but of it's, course uh, we have to dialogue, dialogue between with, the, yeah. mm-hmm. I I'm very interested when you said that 
you know, we must also be very aware, cautious, that what we are doing through survey is using a methodology. Mm. And uh, a methodology that helps us to dialogue with mm. people. Before we initiated this uh, program, actually wanted to do some some search into what such whether such methods are already th tried mm. out and failed. Mm. I thought maybe it's good also to learn from mm. the failures. Mm. So one interesting. Uh, kind of uh, research or kind of interaction I had was with the University of Nijmegen in mm. Netherlands, mm -hmm. where, you know, immediately after Second Vatican Council, they were very much taken up by the sociological mm. tools, but uh, somehow that was too hasty an mm. approach. And uh, uh, it was not very successful mm. in the long run. Mm. So. So, uh, uh, what I feel, what I learned from them is that uh, sociology should not overpower mm. our faith mm. and Christian life, mm. you know. It should help us mm. to understand, and uh, you rightly said, the situation. Mm -hmm. And situation can be very neutral. We learn the situation. Mm. And then discernment, of course, is a, mm. an act of prayer, listening mm. to the Spirit. And I think it's very important. Mm. And uh, we also have, as you said, we have got a very wonderful system in the Catholic Church mm. to communicate from top to mm. bottom. You know, within minutes, mm. um, you know, with, especially with the new social communication media, uh, you know, all what we want to say, it's already there in the, with the faithful. But we also need a reverse process. Mm. And that reverse process is what uh, we tried mm. with the sociological tools. And I'm sure, and by God's grace, the present synodal process mm. is trying to introduce to the Catholic Church. Mm. So in the beginning, when we go to introduce the system, mm. uh, we used to always have a conscientization process mm. before we begin uh, a study in a parish. Mm. Because we are not used to, mm. that's very, mm -hmm. uh, so for example, we used to have a, 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 ho a Sunday homily based mm. on the study or in preparation for the study. Mm. We used to have a, a, co a kind of training program mm. for the parish council members mm -hmm. in, at several levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was very important because they are used to only receiving mm. information from the church, mm. you know, passing a priest, passing information they mm. are to follow. Mm. So we need to uh, do a kind of a pa how to bring them to a participation mm -hmm. and not simply consulting. Mm -hmm. It's more mm -hmm. participate. They also contribute, mm -hmm. you know, that way of uh, uh, that needs a lot a change of mind, yeah, uh, and change of mind, and therefore we used to go for that. And initially, we used to always say that Catholic Church is uh, very much strong in uh, communicating from mm. top to bottom, but not from bottom. Mm. Uh, listen to the bottom le mm. levels. But now we can't say that mm. with the synod on synodality mm. and the process we are now following. Mm. In fact, we are also now the entire church is in this line mm. of uh, listening, yeah, yeah. you know. Listening, and it's really what Pope Francis uh, mm. says about, he uses, you know, the image of the inverted pyramid. Ah, yeah, yeah. So, pyramid, yeah. the pastors listen to the faithful, the yeah. bishops listen to all the faithful and the pastors, and the bishops are warm, yes, yes, listen, yes. In, the, in that sense, mm. uh, because what you describe is really about also the fact that the Holy Spirit is not only speaking from top to exactly. down, yeah, he's yeah. also speaking That's through like, the people. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, yeah. 
I am touched that you express also through mm -hmm. this uh, initiative and then also yes. the seminary, the willingness that mm -hmm. pastors are really close to the people, to the among people, them yeah. and exactly. listening to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think also we really can't communicate in a good way mm -hmm. if we don't know those. <laughs> know those, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. it's about yes. include integrating uh, we can say the reception, mm -hmm. those exactly, who, and, yeah. and thinking about communication mm -hmm. as uh, mm -hmm. not only bottom up, yeah, yeah, it, and, yeah. but also in a more horizontal also, way. Yeah. Um, yes, with the image of that's the Trinity. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. right. Yeah. That's Trinity, reciprocity. Yeah, yeah reciprocity. Is one of the most yeah. uh, important aspect of Trinity, mm -hmm. which we are trying to develop also in this. You know, mm -hmm. that Trinity is not something there in God alone. Mm. We are called to be lead a Trinitarian life yeah. and thus make present, make the Holy Trinity present in our life. No? Yeah, yeah. And so, that's exactly, mm. you know, what we say when we talk about synodality that mm. is really rooted in uh, the Trinity uh, mm. life. <laughs> Trinity and life, yeah. And yeah. in a way, as a family and mm. each Christian community mm. is called to be an image, image of yeah. the Trinity yeah, and yeah. to live the life of the That's Trinity. Right, yeah. In in my co uh, community, for instance, mm. as Xavier's sister, we say that our community life mm -hmm. Has to be the reflect mm -hmm. of uh, the uh, yes the image, image the image, image yeah. the mm -hmm. image of the mm -hmm. and I think it's uh, and reciprocity is really the key word for key synodality word. key word mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah, a key so word so it's really yeah yeah uh, and during my uh, defense yeah. also in the same uh, direction I'm I'm just reminded of what one of my examiners. Mm -hmm. Asked, of course, you speak of reciprocity, and it's a wonderful idea in the context of harmony, mm. you know. But now, when there is a serious um, situation mm. of injustice or mm. imbalance, mm. how are you going to respond to mm. that? I, I think that uh, is a is a, an issue which we also face mm. faced in our interactions mm. in our um, approach in the parishes. Mm. You know, one uh, difficulty which we faced was, suppose, you know, the parish priest is not willing to mm. accept mm. this new attitude, mm. new pastoral attitude, mm. then this whole process becomes very difficult. Mm. So, you know, now also in this whole process, you Pope Francis very often speaks about uh, clericalism mm. and so on. Uh, and this is, in, in some parishes, we, we couldn't complete the project. Mm. Yeah, the project because, really yeah. failed. Mm -hmm. Because at some stage, the parish priest finds it uh, uh, that he's not the sole... Uh, determining mm. person mm. of the pastor ministry yeah. and that really can be affects. afraid sometimes yes, yes, yes. but you know what I really discovered through my uh, mm. uh, when I did my research on synodality yeah. Yeah. based on the experience mm -hmm. of the Synod of Bishop for Young People ah, uh, yeah. of 2018 yes. on the um, face vocation and discernment mm -hmm. young people yeah. and I conducted with this approach mm -hmm. um, interviews and a listening mm -hmm. of 43 synodal members members yeah synodal fathers from mm -hmm. all over the world mm -hmm. experts and auditors yeah, among them yeah. young people about the experience of the synod of synodality mm -hmm. including the preparation and the reception, Re reception of the synod yeah. okay and uh, asking them what were for them the most striking element mm -hmm. of the experience of synodality mm -hmm. in the synod. Every, every, everybody talked about the presence of Pope Francis yes. and is just his way of being yes, among them. Yes, yes. Because during a synod, he listened a lot. Mm -hmm. He just speak at the beginning, mm -hmm. at the end, sometimes very short. 
mm. but is very available for people yes. to meet them be, uh, during the break, before, to be yes. close, to, di- to discuss, and he really listen. Yes, yes. And what I have discovered is that, in fact, he had a great impact. Mm-hmm. All the bishops told me is really a model for us yes, being like yes, that. Yes, yes, so yes. when you are with this style, yes. in fact, listening, then your decision will be better received. Better received yes. And in fact, you have a stronger leadership. Exactly. Yeah. And But it's a process it's to a help process. Yes. all the priests and leaders to yes, understand yes, that. Yes, that yes. Not just being in a authoritarian yeah, top-down exactly, way, but yeah. like this, in fact, you will really mm-hmm. uh, yeah you would exercise exactly, in a better yeah. way you but by empowering the people yes and yes so. you're right you know that's what touched me one of the first uh, sentences there of Pope Francis that touched me was I who asked for conversion mm. Myself has to get converted, mm. you know. The, my the papacy needs conversion. Yeah. He said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In uh, he said in I think Evangelium Gaudium. Yeah. Mm. So uh, that attitude, it's I think is the beginning of yeah. any synodal process. Mm. Oh, from the especially from the part of the leadership, mm. and uh, that's what we also faced in this when we go to parishes. Mm. We thought of initially preparing the parish mm. priests. Yeah. So before going to the parishes. Therefore, we have got sessions mm. only for only parish for, priests. Yeah. So, a training program mm. where we uh, we try to introduce this notion of participation mm. and uh, accompaniment, discernment. Mm. These are three key yeah, concepts uh, which uh, we have worked from 2015 on. Yeah. Now, we have got uh, Parok has already prepared three modules. Mm. With uh, which we are now offering to priests yeah. of other dioceses, oh, right. uh, not only priests. Now we thought pr- uh, when we prepare priests alone mm. in these concepts, it's not a kind of um, rooted in reality. Mm. So now we are thinking of uh, a mixed group you, yeah. where mm. priests, religious, lay people, mm. and when we are able to introduce this mm. theme and allow them to discuss among themselves. Mm. That makes a lot of uh, mm. change yes. uh, uh, in the attitude, mm. and, and so that type of uh, uh, that's another offshoot of this baroque uh, sociological mm. approaches that we were able to introduce certain modules mm. uh, for special groups, mm. uh, uh, you know, as a, a response to the needs we have identified mm. through these studies. Mm. So we are following, I think this is uh, a program yeah, guide yeah. which he has now uh, prepared by uh, myself, uh, where you will find uh, several yeah. such programs uh, which we are now introducing yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we, we also, we are a research center, mm. but there is no, uh, the, the research done in the parish. Yes, it's connected. It's in the mm. parish is our research center. Yeah. Mm. Parish is the center, mm. and who are the researchers? Mm. The parishioners. Mm. So, what we try then is to uh, prepare a group of experts from within the parish mm. who can later on mm. uh, follow it up, mm. and they are called together. They are, you know, we discuss with them what are the areas to mm. be uh, investigated or where we need to know more mm. about the parish. And then they identify the areas, and then what are the questions to be asked. Mm. And from there we go to you questionnaire. Go to questionnaire. And then we prepare the questionnaire, do a pilot study. Mm. Uh, we, the research center has got, Baroque research center has got team of experts, mm. but they mostly remain in the background. Mm. And uh, they go only when there is a need. Mm. I mean, to prepare them a little bit professionally, then we, then one of the experts will go there. Mm. And then uh, the rest, we try to empower a group mm. of parishioners mm. so that they also, this group also gets know, uh, get to know the uh, parish uh, better mm. and they can come to leadership. Mm. 
Another very interesting uh, experience uh, in this regard is that some of the, uh, after the study, we got some very new leaders mm. emerging in the parish. Mm. Earlier it was more people who are interested to be in the power mm. or to be known mm. in the locality and so on. Mm. But now these are leaders who really know the mm. parish, mm. who are willing to put their mind into mm. analyzing what is happening mm. in the parish. Mm. And for a, we have got uh, one, I remember one Mercy, uh, uh, she's a, a lecturer in a college, mm. never active in the parish, mm. but she found now is the time for her mm. to enter. She has a role. Mm. She can. Uh, she is there to use her her, her own resources mm. to analyze, uh, to implement, and things like that. So mm. then, very soon, she became mm. one of the leaders in the parish. Yeah, that's so good. that is an advantage yeah. of such uh, system. So we organize, and that team will then we will prepare investigators. Mm. And they also need some training. Mm. We, are, we are not professional yeah. investigators, studied mm. sociology, mm. but we give some, some lessons some so that uh, they know how to approach mm. people, ask questions, mm. and get, the, get their knowledge from them and so on. And uh, we prepare them. Mm. And that also is a great experience mm. for the people. Yeah, because they listen yes. to the others. And exactly. They, mm. They listen to their own parishness mm. and uh, they find some new insights, you mm. know. It's like epiphany. Mm. <laughs> the wonderful uh, thoughts come up. And then, uh, then th that is the way the survey mm. is being conducted. Then once the data is there, then uh, we again, we organize youngsters yeah, to, to, uh, to, mm. to codify mm. the data. Mm. They are interested in mm. such kind of activity. So they, we will uh, collect it in uh, Excel sheets. Mm. Uh, they will bring their laptops mm. or we prepare some computers for them. And then, then the basic and then it is converted to SPSS format mm. that is done in our mm. institute and do some data manipulations yeah. so that we can bring in yeah. some graphics yeah. and so on. Uh, and then we will go back again to the parish yeah. to, to the present them. Present them. Yeah, it's and very important. Exactly. Yeah. So what we do is uh, we prepare uh, in, we have got two presentations. Yeah. One, the analysis of one family unit, each family unit. Mm. So we, we orga reorganize the responses of, say, 30 families in a unit. Mm -hmm. So when we go to those 30 pa families, we present their mm. responses alone. Mm. We present yeah, it in graphics. Mm. So they very much feel, oh, this mm. is what our mm. response. So they, they can easily own the situation that is mm. being presented before them. Mm. It's more facts and numbers and mm. data. Mm. It's about the life. About the life, mm. yeah. And then, uh, for example, uh, now, uh, maybe sometimes 30% of the families, the, of this family group, unit, we call it, have uh, debt in their families. Mm. So that is a uh, that is an eye opening, mm. because uh, when we present it, they say that I thought it's only my yeah, problem. So they discover they are not they alone. They discover they are not alone, mm. and it's again one third of the families. Mm. So that means uh, they this should be addressed by mm. the family unit, not mm. simply the individual mm. families. So that that awareness mm. happen, mm -hmm. and then we. Uh, then normally, you know, the, the ordinary mind or the traditional way we are, uh, we, our response would be, what shall we do? Mm. Because we are, our families are used to listening yeah, to the right. priest, yeah. mm. listening to the scholar. Mm. Then uh, this, that's uh, something which I am trained by the sociologist mm. priest with me. He said, never give an answer. Mm. Tell uh, what he does, he used to do was, you said this is your problem. Mm. 
it's your finding you must be having some solution yeah. for for this try mm -hmm. your own mm -hmm. responses what can we do mm -hmm. and then they come up with mm -hmm. uh, responses uh, and we will encourage them to do a uh, collaborative work mm -hmm. Not simply mm. what you can do in your family, mm. but what the family together, unit together can together. do. Mm. And that's very interesting. Then they come up with some new ideas, mm. which, uh, you know, we were really surprised. Mm. What I said earlier, epiphany, it's a real mm. epiphany. You see that this is, this is possible. Mm. So uh, sometimes uh, the solution that comes in one single mind of the mm. parish priest and the, the, when this whole group mm. look for a solution, that becomes much, much yeah. uh, effective. Mm. So, so that, that is, is how we come, come to, to action plans. Mm. So every presentation will end up with mm. certain action plans. Again, we will ask who are to implement it. Mm. And we will uh, normally we find, we will take a group, two or three persons from that mm. uh, group, to take up that action mm. plan. Mm. So we, first of all, we uh, we make sure that they own that action mm. plan and they themselves are ready to implement mm. it. Uh, of course, together with the parish community, mm. together with the parish priest. So the parish priest is not someone who is a dictator, mm. but is only a facilitator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is what we are now. This is what we are now trying. I think we did in almost forty-five parishes already. Oh, this type of study. Uh, yeah. Really, really interesting. Yeah, Congratulations, yeah. because yeah. it's and it's really everything you explain. You know, mm. is really resonating with yeah. the approach of synodality. Exactly. And, yeah. and in a way, the methodology of synodality that is coming from the council. Second Vatican II is yeah. based on this, yeah. you know, see, church, act, or yeah. recognizing, understanding yeah. the reality, mm -hmm. read, so listening, mm -hmm. reading the signs of the time, reading the reality in the mm -hmm. light of the Word of God. Exactly, so it's, yeah. you need to interpret, mm -hmm. to then to discern and to, to choose and to act. Yes, yes. So yes. it's, it's exactly, and, uh, with this, really this understanding, you express that you are always better mm. together than alone. Because mm. alone, you only have your own lenses. Lens, yeah. Because everybody, we have some lenses. Yes, yes, so to yes. understand the reality only with your own um, lenses, mm -hmm. well, it can be <laughs> good. Yeah, but yeah. when you cross-read, exactly, you listen yeah. to everybody, you uh, you are more clever yeah and exactly. uh, and and it's uh, and then as you say when you encourage people to mm -hmm. um, really uh, take action and be protagonist mm -hmm. and Popontis is really mm -hmm. repeating that uh, mm -hmm. so many times that everybody has to be protagonist exactly yeah, yeah. and that's the vision of synodal yeah, church you yeah, know yeah. communion Participation, Participation, mission. mission yeah. So you are doing that. <laughs> yes, slowly in that. But, um, uh, I was reminded of uh, when you said it's your own lens mm. you are looking at, and then when people, uh, Raymond Panike once said, you know, mm. uh, when you look at reality, be aware that you are looking from your own window. Mm the same reality is looked by others from their mm -hmm. respective windows and only if we can really communicate mm -hmm. and then express what do you see that to take us mm -hmm. to a better understanding of yeah. the reality yeah. yeah and that's i can say uh, i have expressed i have been involved in different ways in mm. youth ministry yeah, with young yeah. people during 30 years and at the end i was responsible for mm. youth ministry at the french bishops conference mm -hmm. and i really experience how you you are more fruitful mm -hmm. when you do pastoral with a team, team and yeah. a diverse team exactly, because yeah, you yeah. 
you enrich mm -hmm. your vision lenses, mm -hmm. you discern better yeah, yeah, yeah. when you have priests, religious, lay people, men mm -hmm. and women, yeah. younger and older, older yeah. because it's so if you can work like this in this very collaborative, mm. participative way, mm. with so you 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 do better. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. And, and and yeah. So, no, but no. Uh, as you say, in, in, uh, and it's very interesting that you put emphasis also on uh, on formation, mm. training yeah, the people exactly, because yeah. it's it's really needed also. It's very important. Yeah. Now, as a, re recently we completed a one-year program on pastoral leadership mm. and the main focus was participatory mm. leadership. Mm. Pastoral participation, mm. pastoral animation, mm. all done as a group. Mm. So this, this was, I think, almost 75 of them completed mm. this course uh, online. Mm -hmm. Mostly we had only very few offline programs. Mm. But we made use of all the possibilities mm. of online, mm. like group discussions yeah, group and discussions. Um, coming back mm. with reporting mm. and uh, also activities, mm. assignments, mm. Uh, experience sharing and so mm. on. And uh, the, the, the beauty of that group was there were engineers, there were priests, mm. there were young boy, youngsters, mm. uh, people, all sorts of, uh, all walks mm. of life come together in this mm. group. So that really enriched mm. this whole uh, program. Mm. Uh, and now they are like wanted to, what you said, the final outcome should be mission. Mm. In fact, we had no idea earlier what next after mm. the course. Mm. You know, we completed the course, gave them certificates, mm. but then they were insisting on yeah. we need to do something. Yeah, to implement. Implement. Uh, mm. So they are looking, now they are, we are now discussing with them uh, for finding spaces for them to do mission. Mm. So the first thing they asked was, we want to do something for the missions mm. which mm. are outside. Mm. But then we also encourage them to be do mission in their own context. Where they are. They yeah. are, where they are. Mm. So uh, this is, I think, it uh, truly resonates mm. with the three categories mm. which we have used mm. in the synod synodality. And these training programs, we find... It's very important, mm. ongoing formation mm. uh, of the clergy, of the laity, mm. of the religious. Uh, now, we recently identified in these studies, we are priests, religious, lay leaders, but people are now looking for spiritual guides. Mm. So, that was a need. Yeah, so, uh, so we train also. Yes. So, mm. we recently organized a, a training program where some, you know, People who and who are capable mm. of spiritual guides mm. in their context. Mm. Now, uh, one of the m most important requests they always have in all these studies are need for counselling, mm. possibility for counselling. Okay, yeah. And now we are work. We have already mm. developed some mm. uh, arrangements mm. for that. But they are even asking for counseling possibility in each parish mm. which is uh, yeah. too ambitious for yeah. us at the mm. right now but mm. i think that reveals something yeah yeah because you know really yeah. people need to be listened to need to be listened uh, and to, to yeah. be yes to be accompanied and yeah, counseled but yeah. uh, not just to have someone to tell them what to do yes, but to, yes. to help them to that's right yeah, yeah. yeah to journey yeah. together and uh, it's uh, but it's very interesting to see how your yeah. listening of, of, yeah. of the realities for the studies yes. then is is a process. It's of, a process. Uh, is yes. a process yes. of uh, of change in yes. a way. Then, but for to, yeah. to to really be more and more this missionary church with exactly. and for the yeah. people. Yeah. So uh, the, this you know through this study in the parishes, what we learned is that the, the, we could inculcate a sense of belongingness mm. to the parish. Mm. It's their parish. It's their family. Mm. And they own the issues, the problems, as well as mm. the solutions to that. Mm -hmm. I think that is one of the most important uh, fruits of this synodal process yeah. which we yeah, are yeah. now. Uh, you know, people feel that, you know, we have, we have given them a great hope mm all throughout the world, mm. through the synodal process, 
something we can contribute. Mm. I, I always feel that we should not fail that hope. Mm. You know, it's a, it's a huge challenge, yeah, yeah, especially yeah. from the part of the leadership, mm. uh, not to fail their, mm. the, the, the hope which we have given them. Yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, it, it's true for us. It was very moving to hear yeah. from so many parts of the world, you yes. know, it's the same kind of feedback mm -hmm. of so many people who have been part of the Synodal Consultation and Synodal mm -hmm. Consultation. They said, you know, it was really the first time mm -hmm. the church asked my voice. Yes. And doing that, I realized mm -hmm. that the church is not only the bishops and the priests, yeah. but we are all together, the church has baptized. Exactly, and yeah. exactly what you, yes, uh, what yes, you see. Yes. And we had received this feedback from so mm -hmm. many different yes, countries. Yes. So, so in our so theological or our training program, some of the concepts which we give, great importance to a census with alien, yeah. for example. Mm. So uh, that is the basis, you know, all the baptized mm. are mm. in fact consecrated yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit. The, Holy the Spirit, Spirit works mm. in them. So we are not the few consecrated mm. here, the rest mm. not. And therefore, uh, the, that's we need to listen to the Spirit. Mm. And that we always emphasize again. Uh, you know, apart from who speaks, uh, whom we are listening to, what is important is you li prayerfully listen mm. to the Spirit. Mm. Because there are possibilities which we find also in our small little parishes uh, that there are sometimes self-interest mm. uh, mm. comes out. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, lobbying happens. Mm. Yeah. And that's a very serious yeah. struggle which yeah, we are. Yeah. It's in a way a kind of wound mm. which we have to mm, carry with us mm. while we are involving in this process. Mm. Uh, where uh, it's like we we have to accept that there will be mm. such lobbying. Mm. Along with that, we need to still we do not we sh we should not be discouraged by mm. that, but we have to carry that wound and mm. then heal it. Uh, it's not easy. We understand that in our situations, mm. when there are two groups in a parish or mm. another, even parish priest uh, sometimes becomes a wound where yeah. we are not able to uh, reconcile with. And another group that uh, very often feel discouraged in this process are the, the so-called um, the men of the parish. I mean, mm. they are not, perhaps they are they are the, uh, when I say, unappointed leaders of the parish. They always like to see that their views mm. are heard, mm. their views are followed, and they find a satisfaction mm. in that. And very often uh, we say that in the parish councils, they, they have the louder voice, mm. and that voice has to be implemented. Yeah. And uh, now this is not the question of who speaks louder mm. uh, in this whole process, Everyone's voice mm. is to be heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we we normally say in this uh, disc, uh, in this conscientization mm. phase, how many are there in the parish council? Mm. Say fifty or sixty. How many percentage does it come? Perhaps one percent or one point mm. five percent. Mm. How can we say that this one point percent five percent knows everything Every about senior. others? Mm. And therefore, uh, the parish council members should know that they are representing. Mm. They said, people behind us, mm. people whom they are responding. So they should listen to them. Mm. And then, when they press, when they get involved in a discussion, they should uh, know. They should they they should listen to them. They should listen to, of course, their inspiration insp uh, inspirations. And then listen, what does the Spirit mm. say about this? Mm. So, uh, since I think two or three years now, we have a module only to train parish council yeah, members. parish council members. Yeah, yeah. so mm. that mm. is a, uh, now, now we have new parish councils in all our parishes. Mm. So, we have started a second mm. uh, round of mm. uh, training. I think we have completed almost 30 parishes mm. now. Now it's going on every mm. Sunday. The mm. uh, this uh, these training programs mm. are going on. So this training is very important. Mm. 
I used to discuss again in preparation for this whole process with another uh, situation in Germany. Mm. I have a good friend, uh, one Bernd Lutz, mm -hmm. okay, pastor theologian. Mm. So he used to, when I used to discuss what we are doing here, mm. he used to tell us, tell me, uh, you, you have entered this method at the right time. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Because we still have uh, the faithful very much attached to yeah. the church, mm. love the church. Mm. They are still value their faith. They still would like to get involved in mm. parish ministry. Mm. This is the right time. And he told me in his context, he, you know, he said we were late to mm. enter because uh, many of our parishioners lost that mm. connectedness mm. with the parish. Uh, so that way we are we are, we are, we yeah, thank God for it's, that. It's yeah. very, yeah. yeah, it's very interesting. And uh, I think ready, mm -hmm. as you say, an important tool to yeah. accompany Campaign. this yeah, exactly. uh, stage of, yes. uh, the, of the church today with synodalities. That is also yeah. ready for us, um, mm. you know, a new stage of the reception yeah. of the Second yes, Vatican yes, Council, yes, yes, yes. Uh, highlighting as you mm. have said, the common uh, baptism, baptism common and the equal baptism. dignity of yeah. all the baptized yeah. and the common priesthood yes, of, the, yes. of the festival and, and the ecclesiology of people mm. of God. We mm. are all together yeah, people yeah, of God. Yeah. So, but then it's how we really live that mm -hmm. <laughs> because as Pope Francis says, synodality is not, it's an easy concept in yeah. a way, turning together. Mm -hmm. But to put it into practice, practice is yeah. really a challenge. challenge yeah. <laughs> and, and we are, in a way, we are relearning. Mm, we are relearning. Uh, yeah, right. and, and it's a learning process yes, also. Yes, yes. And that's what really we experience through the mm. um, synodal process mm. now with this continental stage. Mm. And, and that's the difficulty with synodality. You can't mm. Only learn it in an academic way exactly, or in yeah. books or yeah. articles. It's a learning by doing. By doing, by doing. A yeah. And you need to experience it. Yes, yes. And, and so that's why it's very, very yes. interesting. And I really congratulate and uh, you think, and the yeah. Institute for um, this approach that mm -hmm. is experiential yes, in a way, yeah. involving people in a process, in yes, an experience, yes. in a training. Uh, it, it's like exactly because you don't learn about the Holy Spirit mm. in a theoretical way. Theoretical it's way, exactly, through, yeah. you know, the, the life, life of, yeah. of the Christians, yes, of the church, yes. of the community. Yes. In that sense, I feel, you know, when, uh, when I try to uh, resonate with the whole synodal mm. process, perhaps our experience comes um, perhaps uh, meaningful, as part of the post synodal process, mm. because uh, now we have got we have we have done a wonderful exercise. Mm. Now, how are we going to uh, realize it at the micro level? Yeah, yes, you that's know? the most important. So I think mm. that's the experience which we mm. we can contribute yeah, to yeah, uh, yeah. the synodal process. And and really, what we say, you know, mm. and what. Pope Francis wants, it's very clear through mm -hmm. the, we have this synod 21-24, mm -hmm. but this synod is at the service yes. of a long process exactly, of yeah. synodal conversion for the church. Yes, yes, yes. And the most important is how it is changing and what is happening at the local level, local level yeah. because it's calling for this mm. synodal style everywhere yeah. and beginning in the parish, in, yeah, in the yeah. family. In the family, the <laughs> in family. The, uh, and, and there are many, many things mm. you don't need to wait for an yeah. assembly in Rome, exactly, you know, to implement exactly, yeah. a, a good way to have a parish council. You know. Of course, there are some right. topics you need to deal with them yes. at the universal level. But there are many, many things yeah. you can do. Already. Perhaps uh, mm. I can share. I don't know whether mm. uh, it's okay for you yeah, to yeah. continue, mm. because maybe something analogical to that happened also with us in the archdiocese. Mm. You know, uh, while we were doing this kind of uh, interventions in parishes, uh, our archbishop 
and the curia decided to organize to conduct a archdiocesan synod mm. which okay. we call in the oriental churches archdiocesan assembly yeah okay. yeah assembly so he he already declared it mm. and uh, he you know as the usual process mm. uh, you ask for the themes to mm. be discussed but it's a kind of routine mm-hmm. and then after t- two three months he declared now this is mm. what we are going to and mm. uh, do uh, discuss upon and the synod is going to happen uh, in such and such a date but then those parish priests who underwent this process of parok mm. uh, method they approached the archbishop and said how did you really identify the topic mm. then he said uh, i asked for uh, um, the topics from you all how many you got i the responses were very minimum mm. some 10 for mm. say for example for the whole 87000 families mm. adices with so mm. many families then this they asked him we need to follow parok model mm. and that's how we have now that has become a a, a phrase now mm. parok model do yeah. that in parok model <laughs> okay. that means uh, from below yeah, from you below. listen to the yeah. people and so on mm. and our archbishop took it very serious oh, yeah. he said i cancel all the plans mm. i had and, we... and uh, he appointed father saijo as yeah. uh, a, a, a director to to do this whole process mm. and we underwent a, a long procedure asking the opinion of each family mm. unit mm. what are the urgent mm. burning issues in the diocese mm. first they have to identify what are their burning issues in their mm. context mm. in their parish mm. and for the other diocese yeah, so we did uh, Uh, they they were all given in formats mm. given by us and then we could collect it and we did a study of that and then mm. we identified the topics that evolved mm. from this mm-hmm. you see that was how uh, that is how we uh, started mm. and this uh, and then we organized again the same procedure mm. we sent uh, we we uh, we questionnaires were given to all 87000 families mm. not sample study mm. it was a benchmark yes, study benchmark on then mm. we got the responses again we did the whole pro- mm. it was a huge task yeah i can you imagine can imagine it? that was a huge yeah. task we received almost uh, 95% uh, return um, um, the the mm. questionnaires back and then uh, this was again uh codified in mm. spss and then before we organized the archdiocesan assembly we conducted parish assembly mm. analyzing the responses mm. of that parish yeah. alone mm-hmm. and th- so this took i think 4 years mm. to complete uh, to mm. reach the actual archdiocesan assembly mm. but then archdiocesan assembly was only there to discuss the action plans mm, yes because you because it has already reached that mm, side that level mm. and how to implement it how to mm. disseminate mm. the uh, these actions to various mm. parishes and were you surprised by the results or? certainly yeah we were you know the the it was uh, uh, like the document continentals mm. uh, document said new seeds mm, yeah um, uh, it's not only the fruits mm. new seeds mm-hmm. we found certain areas need to be uh, yeah. these are new seeds which we need to really inculcate mm. may allow to grow mm. uh, develop and uh, even affecting the pastoral systems which we already have mm. now for one uh, wonderful fruit which is of this particular process is uh, we began something called pact uh pastoral animation and coordination team in every parish mm. uh to empower the parish council mm-hmm. 
Now, what happens very often is parish council comes up with an agenda. Mm. This agenda is presented there. Maybe this 50 people talk about, they, you know, they, they discuss very often. The agenda is not given in advance. Mm. Whatever that comes to their mm. mind, they express, mm. come up with a, a conclusion. Mm. That should not be. Mm. So, uh, the pact is a subcommittee mm. within the okay, uh, parish thing. council, mm. which will further study these questions, mm -hmm. if that is so important. Mm. So, perhaps, suppose it is a question on uh, youth, mm. then this, uh, this pact members mm. should consult the youth, mm. they discuss mm. with the youth, they, then they have to learn what is the real need mm. of the youth. All the stakeholders mm. are consulted, discussed, mm. and then they come up with their study, and then they propose. propose. Some, yeah. Of course, it is to be um, parish council is to take the decision. Mm. But they have this the information. Information. It's, it's not a fact. Is not a decision making yeah, body. But it prepares. Prepares. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we are still in the process. I mm. can. I should say that it's not uh, not yet a success. Mm in most of mm. the parishes. Mm. But this insight mm. is from this response to the entire mm. families. Mm -hmm. This this great big survey we mm. conducted. So uh, we still need a lot of preparation. Maybe we are struggling mm. to implement it. Mm. It's already implemented in many parishes, but then COVID uh, yeah, you know, stopped uh, everything. Mm. Now we have to again mm. restart this mm. whole process. Mm. But this is uh, perhaps a way uh, this the present synodal process mm. uh, which we are now uh, as Catholic Church mm. people from all parts of the world are involved in mm. needs to see ways and means to also influence the system, influence mm. the way we live as church. Mm. Uh, and there I think pastoral needs to be taken seriously. Mm. Pastoral, uh, uh, not only approaches, also the pastoral activities, the way we mm. do pastoral ministry mm. has to be uh, some impact or, or the synod should have some impact on that. Yeah. You know, I, I'm sure that something will come up yeah. uh, from the whole process. Yes, yeah. really listening to you, what I realized, you know, I was lucky to be part of the synod on young people. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was called now as I can, I'm Sorry to disturb you, but now I understand why the synod on, uh, on youth uh, took a very different turn. I mean, you were listening to the youth mm. from all different the digital media. Um, maybe that's from your methodology. Yes, okay. and, and what I wanted to share yeah. with you really through this listening of young people in so yeah. many ways, with also the press, you know, on mm -hmm. young people and all the process of listening to the young. We have already realized as church with mm -hmm. the Synodal Fathers who were there that the only way to transmit the faith today yeah. is with the style of a synodal church. Yeah. And so synodality is really the, the call of God for yeah. the church today and the way to continue to proclaim the mm -hmm. gospel and, and mm -hmm. to be church. But, but following, following the synodal news, news you, you know, Pope, Pope Francis has written the post-synodal post exhortation, mm -hmm. Christus Vivit, that, that is really a roadmap yeah. for yeah, youth yeah. ministry. And, and he says, says in mm. chapter 7, Mm. That, that youth, mean, youth pastoral, youth yeah. pastoral has, has to be missionary, mm. popular in, in a way to reach everybody, yeah. and synodal. Yeah. So the, it's, it's exactly, exactly what you say. What, what we understand, understand is that through the synodal news, it mm. was that really youth pastoral has, has to be synodal. Mm. And now with this synod, yeah. what we understand is it's not only youth pastoral, it's mm. all kind of pastoral yeah. that has to be synodal. Yes, yes. And so that's really exa exactly yeah. what you say. It's how you know, know synodality is not just uh, an event, an event yeah. you do it for a synod, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, you need an event as mm. a process, mm. but mm. it's to really embrace this side in all the life of the church. It's uh, 
pastor has to be synodal, uh, the way we do catechisms, yeah. uh, all kind of... Uh, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. If, uh, that's why the Christus Philip was received very well, mm. you know, because it was very attractive. Yeah, yeah. yeah you feel yeah. that? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And I think already even in the, uh, in the Amuri Slitis, mm. you find yeah. uh, that trend started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, families, mm. uh, leading families, or families uh, leading the pastor, family apostolate, you know, that type of approach was there. And, and I, I think, think it, is, it is more vivid mm. in Christmas feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, now we, have we have come, come to... Yeah. But uh, yeah. now, uh, yeah. being yeah. also yeah. a theologian, yeah. I always yeah. have... Uh, when, when it comes come to the top, top level, level, we've got a lot, lot of uh, theological yeah. kind of insecurity yeah. among yeah. us yeah. in the hierarchy yeah. and also yeah. among yeah. the traditional yeah. theologians because yeah. this... Uh, you know, very often synodality is seen as replacing all what we said earlier in privacy or even collegiality, all those aspects where there was some kind of priority to the, uh, to the hierarchy, to the bishops, to the city. That uh, is now moving. That is changing. But to the right reason, and I am convinced that this should be the way uh, forward, forward. Uh, then, then that, that theological reflection, reflection also needs to accompany. Yeah, uh, because uh, really, you know, what you express, and I've been, been working, working on that also, um, the, the issue hmm. is not, not to suppress, suppress privacy yeah. or collegiality, but what Pope Francis is mm. doing, and it's really the fruit mm. of, the, of the Second Vatican Council, mm. is to insert primacy and collegiality within the synodality of all the people of God. And um, there is no primacy without synodality and no synodality without primacy. So it's not to oppose them, exactly, yeah. but to exercise primacy in a new, new style. style. And, and that's, that's exactly, exactly what, what at the beginning you remind, mm. that mm. Pope Francis is opening also a new way to yeah. exercise yeah. primacy. But, but it's, it's not, not only Pope Francis, you know, yeah. the first was John Paul II, yeah. who stated yeah. that at this stage, and also mm. for ecumenical mm. reason, mm. you you could envision mm. a new way to exercise yeah. primacy. And Pope Benedict also talked yeah. about yeah. that, and, mm. and now Pope, uh, Pope Francis. Yeah. And in a way, I often share that, you know, one of the most uh, important uh, turning points, we can say, or output at the Council for the Constitution of the Church, Lumen Gentium, was at the time the Council Fathers decided to put Chapter 2 on the people of God, after Chapter 1 on Trinity and the history of the Church, yeah. Chapter 2 on people of God before Chapter 3 on the hierarchy. Yeah. Chapter 3 is there. Yeah, yeah. But it's how you read Chapter 3 through the lenses of, yeah. of Chapter 2. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's, uh, and, and that's now we are trying to implement, implement. that. In fact, it's in real continuity with the human agency. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly... And, uh, it's the pastoral realization of the vision yeah. of Lehman Genesis. Yeah. And uh, as chapter one, and that's the true identity nature of the church. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you the know, nature. such a pilgrim church, pilgrim church on the road that has to be also in history, has yeah. to be reformed. Yeah. 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 But uh, with this vision, really mystical vision, yeah. we can, we, yeah. we can yeah. say that. that's why, and I think also for pastors and leaders, mm -hmm. you can yeah. only leave this change, yes. that yes. it's not easy. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's yeah. not, I always say, it's mm. normal to, to face resistance, fear, because, because it's, it's not easy. It's, it's, not easy. it's, it's a spiritual process, process like, like in our life, life you know, yeah. you have up and down, exactly. uh, spiritual <laughs> fight. And, but then the question is, at this stage, the church mm -hmm. has a fruit, as you say, of mm -hmm. the council, ready to implement Lumen Gentium, mm -hmm. 
as discerns that synodality is the call of God for yeah. the Church of the Third Millennium. Mm -hmm. So it's not a matter I like it or I don't like it. I want to do it or I don't want to do it. It's a matter to answer the call of God. And when you understand that, even if you have, you have fears, well, you can uh, continue because it's it's a call of the Holy Spirit. But it's. Uh, I, think I think that's, that's also, also the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. You see, he, uh, he never simply dictated. Yeah. He, he always listened to the people, to the fields, mm. and to the birds, and, and to the situations in which he is. Yeah. Even the, the leper becomes mm. a context mm. in which the word of God is uh, unveiled. Mm. So, so uh, that's, that's how. And uh, he always he found it as a, a collegial activity. Mm. Long together with the apostles, the disciples, the yeah. women mm. accompany him. You know, it's, it's always like widening the um, the circle. Mm. Like the the, 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 the continental the document, document, like he said, extend and enlarge the time. I think, think that, that is exactly uh, the mission that was the mission of Jesus Christ. Mm. And that is also the Trinity. Trinity is not simply a containing in itself. That love, uh, that love becomes a love bone that spreads everywhere. And then uh, inviting Paul to participate in this uh, relationship. Uh, I think, uh, therefore, I think there are a lot of theological uh, insights mm. that can really guide, empower mm. this whole process. Yes. Uh, in its way. It's, it's already there, I think, in the National Theological Yes, yeah, yeah, so the document of the, um, well, first document on the census PDI, yes. 2014, and on the yes. synodality in the life and the It's a wonderful continuity yeah. there. Yeah. And there's also the nation ecclesia, which also emphasizes yeah. on the Charisms, yeah, 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 yes, it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not only the hierarchical no, charisms, the, the two yeah. dimension, I can put that. Charismatic and hierarchical dimension, both are co essential exactly. to the church. Yeah. And, and what uh, you expressed before mm. is a synodal church is, a, is also a church that value, mm. recognize mm. Yes. the diversity of the charism. Yeah, and the charism is always a Mm. For, for the, the common, common good, good. <laughs> not yeah. only for, yes. but yes, uh, yes, yes. It's, it's, it's important. important. And, and you know, know we often uh, present in a way, way. Mm. and I was, I was thinking, thinking in, 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 in a way, you, the, the power of modern yes, 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 yes. is really resonating yes. with this, this image we often give of synodality mm. as yes. a paradigmatic yes. image from, from the gospel, yes. because yes. really Jesus is our model of synodality, as you say. And it's the the model of Jesus on the road of Emmaus, mm. you know, yeah. is where the disciples are ah, in their situation that they are yeah. suffering. He begins to listen to them, exactly. then he, he explains the scripture, exactly. and he doesn't impose himself, mm. but at the time the two disciples ask him, remain with us, exactly. he stays, they have this experience, and mm. then the disciples go back to yes. Jerusalem, they are reinserted in yes. the community, so they have experienced the conversion. Yes. And really, I think, and for me, it's mm. the way Jesus is with mm. the disciples on the road of Emmaus mm. is really inspiring, inspiring for this model of accompaniment, journeying with the people, yes, yes, and uh, it's... Uh, Oh, so wonderful. I'm also, I'm also very happy that uh, I never <laughs> thought that we could be able to share so in a very wonderful way, I should say. This was because, because I think the Parok has got the, uh, a similar way length of what you yeah. have engaged in. And uh, we hope, we certainly believe that this is the plan of God for Indian Church and for our community, especially. And uh, the, the synodal, synodal process, process certainly going, going to, you know, we are really excited <laughs> and we are walking <laughs> together <laughs> with you. Yes, <laughs> thank you, process. and it's uh, yeah. reciprocal. Uh, thank and uh, thank, thank you because, because uh, uh, I was very really touched and interested to learn more. And, and you know, really, 
with, with what we also mm. could do at the Synod office is coming yeah. from the listening of exactly. best practices yeah. Yeah. at the local yeah. level. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and I really feel that mm. what you experience mm. here yeah. can also inspire yeah. others. Yeah. Mm. So the report on the, uh, the Zero Malabar Church, mm. they decided to specifically mention this as a best mm. practice yeah. mm-hmm. and put it as an appendix mm. to uh, the report. Yeah. So we were very really happy to see that, yeah. that we are taken seriously. Mm. And thank, thank you very much. I think I have yeah. take, we have yeah. taken too much <laughs> of your time uh, amidst your busy schedule. And I'm sure you will be preparing for tomorrow's uh, paper. And uh, we request your prayers and support for our journey forward. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Excellence. I'm ready. Yes, I uh, all you and all the Institute and the Archdiocese in my prayer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.